I was wondering what to talk here, and I listened to the speakers before, uh, and then touched upon the strategics. But uh, at the beginning, it was very much around uh, venture capital. And I would like to, to talk a little bit about the expectation level. Um, so what do you sell and how do you sell well? Uh, how do you raise capital well? How, and also maybe there are some strategic in the audience. And how do you, do you drive investments? Because then started um, a bit uh, critical when, when he said, uh, yeah, many they're passive, et cetera. And, and that's fair, right? Some can be passive, but I'm also not a, not a friend of being a passive investor. Uh, so to, to explain a little bit more about my background when it comes to investment, uh, I have been um, in, in the corporate world, and that's also why I'm focusing more on, on strategic investors. I have been in the corporate world running business um, on a product level, on a divisional level, on a country level, on a regional level, and a global level. So I, I, I in fact, had it all in all perspectives in all countries. I have been done um, over more than 10 years, major m and operations, major acquisitions, uh, acquired more than 80, 80 companies across the world. Uh, so that gives you a good foundation uh, for partnerships. I took a lot of minority stakes uh, and had to find the alignment, which Dan mentions, right? On the vision, on the values, on the modus operandi. And that's also valid for for what I've done more than more than 10 years after, uh, which is um, investing and working with startups. And um, now I'm, I'm focusing together with other investors um, on the crossroad of digitalization and um, um, sustainability. Um, so we are, we are focusing on what is, what is called the, four, the industry 4.0. So this is industrial technology. Um, has, uh, um, Amazon has just announced the, the 1 billion funds, which they call industrial innovation. Um, this is what we are in fact uh, discussing and proposing uh, for, for quite some time. So we are, we are our, our ambition is to help corporates to innovate and to get it right. And we are also helping uh, startups uh, to grow. Um, the focus is more on the investor side, but if we really find the startup we like, um, we also work with the startup and then see that we find the investor uh, later on. So, but what do I want to, to stress now um, when it comes to, to strategic investors? I think it's, it's very important to understand that you have to find, as Dan pointed out, the right strategic investor. And what are strategic investors, good strategic investors, um, they have two, usually two ambitions or two goals when they are investing. The one goal is to fill a gap. And I come to, to that in, in a minute. So this is to make the operations better, uh, to catch up with the latest developments, to integrate things which they don't have. That's filling a gap. Um, this is good, and uh, startups need to know whether they are filling a gap or whether they do something else, what, what we like more. And the something else, the more, is in fact uh, the true innovation, the true self-disruption, building the next generation, the investor 2.0, so a new competitor. And... Uh, that can be, for example, I'm, I'm a supply chain person and the logistics is part of supply chain. It can be a digital logistics company. 
And we know the, the big digital forwarders. We have a unicorn, which is Flexport. Um, so somebody can invest in Flexport to in fact build the next uh, generation of logistics companies of four borders. And, and this is clearly Flexport is an alternative business model. And then there are companies that, for example, have very narrow solutions like uh, helping with fighting counterfeits and that can be an immutable QR code. And investing in this is to learning more about the space and, and integrating that, for, for example, in a hardware uh, sale business. So, so this is the first. I, I think it's important to understand what do I want to buy as a strategic investor? So what am I doing here? And for uh, a venture, where do I fit in? And that brings me to the, to the next topic because dependent on, so what is on the table, there are different consequences. And you heard some of them also from Dan, um, because what can you sell? What can you buy? You can buy intellectual property. You can buy a team. I don't like that term, um, but you can be interested in that team. You can be interested in a product, in a product line. You can be interesting, interested in a, a customer base, a user base. Um, uh, so, and you can just be interested in revenue. So what is important then is that if people are selling IP, or buying IP or investing into IP, this is usually um, a, flat, a flat takeover. And the same is with the interest of people. You don't want to invest 10% in a, in a company if you are interested to have to own the IP or to have that team as part of your company. So people have then to be aware that that is a, what we heard this is a change of life for the venture. It's a change of life. They become corporate people. The same usually happens when uh, it's about revenue. It's also integration. But when it's about a product line, when it's about a, a business that, that exists in its own right, then it is about creating and leaving it as an independent unit. Um, and this is also when I, when I did M&A and minority stakes, I usually left them very much as an independent unit. But if, if a strategic invests in the next generation of itself, then it should also see that it increases the stake and that it also gives enough support to grow this business. And there is a beautiful sweet spot between the, the two worlds, the, the venture world and the, the corporate world. The corporate world has usually money. The corporate world has market knowledge. Uh, the corporate world has customers and relationships but it doesn't have the innovation, the drive, uh, the novelty of a venture. And, and if it comes together in the right shape and way, then miracles can happen. But what corporates need to be aware of, if they enter into the capital of an independent business, then this business needs support, no controls. It needs freedom, it needs flexibility. They cannot, such an entity usually cannot afford the compliance measures of a corporate. So it needs to live its own life. And that is sometimes very painful for the corporates to accept that. And then touched upon also on the tolerance level for failure. These independent units make, make mistakes. They fail and it's not, about blaming them, it's about helping them to correct it. Although they know this, but I'm giving support. They know usually what to do and they pivot fast, 
but to support them in that, in that endeavor. And I would like to speak also a moment about the integration. Corporates need to be aware if they are interested in a team, uh, then these people might not fit into a corporate environment. And uh, so, so there is a lot of, Dan mentioned the coffee, a lot of coffee drinking and uh, an exchange needed. I would like to, to give some indications how companies, how ventures can understand whether this is a corporate which, which may work for them or not. So there are, there are a few things which are important. The first is that the, you know, the strategic investor should have a clear strategy and it should have a corporate venture arm. It should not be uh, an investment of the balance sheet. It should not be uh, an integrated approach within the company because what happens then is that the, uh, the venture plays always the second fiddle to the host and that kills the dynamics. So how is the structure? Do they have a clear strategy? Is there a clear myself 2.0 approach? The second thing is, is why do they invest? And I touched upon that at the beginning. I hear a lot and I hear it every week. We invest because we want to learn. This is not a reason for investment. It is an outcome of investment, but it should be one of the two things I said before. It should be either filling a gap, it should, resolve a pain point. It should be based on a clear analysis why, why they invest and, and need this piece. Um, and then there is another, another point, which is um, because ventures live in the future, they create the future, they are the future. It is important that they understand whether the strategic invests in what is, which is the present and very often the past, or whether they invest or wish to invest what could be or what they think will be. Because that future orientation, if that is a given and you hear it uh, when you speak and, and you prepare the partnership, uh, that gives uh, comfort that they, they are ready to give that space, which I have uh, mentioned, mentioned before. And then the, the other thing is, and that it has been stressed already, is, is there a real partnership approach in the making? And if not, then uh, it probably will not work. And to, to give a little bit of a, of a, let's say, wrapping up anecdote or just a, uh, an analogy is uh, investing in startups, is like for corporates, is like investing in, in taking care of a baby, taking care of a child, taking care of an, ad, uh, an adolescent, depending on what stage they are. And that means we have to pay for the studies, right? We have to pay for the school or the kindergarten or the, or the, the diapers, right? So that's, that's the role, to take care, to foster. And that also is a nice picture because it, it shows our children, our future, and that should be the philosophy behind the investment. Thank you.